in turn, if you want something in nature that's, I think, the most common thing that's like a dodecahedron is soot or carbon dust in outer space. So it turns out <coughs> that um, it naturally forms this pattern here, sometimes called a buckyball after Buckminster Fuller. So Buckminster Fuller was an engineer who designed the geodesic dome. And if you, if you took, well, this is also the pattern of a soccer ball. If you notice, it has, it has some pentagons, which would be black in a soccer ball, football. Uh, and it has some hexagons, which would be white. Um, but what it, way to think of it is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's what you get by taking a dodecahedron and chopping off certain corners of it to make this more fancy pattern. Uh, and chemists, at some point, did a whole lot of work to synthesize this, this molecule. But then later on, they discovered that if you just have a candle and you stick a spoon over it and some black soot forms on it, a lot of that stuff is made of this. So it turned out they didn't need to do so much work to, to make it. And in fact, if you, they found that if you look around certain stars, certain stars near the end of their life, they shoot out huge amounts of carbon. And now we can just, using spectroscopy, see that a lot of that carbon is in the form of this stuff. So there are these dodecahedron, or buckyballs, floating around out in outer space just naturally. What about humans and uh, dodecahedra? Well, of course, the earliest human-made dodecahedron is Scottish, as you would expect. <laughs> um, so here it is, right here. Um, so these are some carved stone balls which have been found in various parts of, of Scotland and northern England uh, that date back to around 2000 BC. And they're actually, they come in all sorts of patterns, not just these types of patterns, but a lot of interesting geometrical patterns. No one has any clue, as far as I know, what they were used for. But these five here are modeled after what we call the platonic solids, although Plato came a lot after this, so it really shouldn't be called that, I guess. Uh, but this is basically a dodecahedron with these pentagons. This is basically an icosahedron. It's called with uh, 20 <coughs> triangles. They're sort of rounded out and bumpy in, this, in these models. This is called an octahedron. It has eight triangles. This is modeled after a tetrahedron. It has four triangles. This one's pretty wiggly here. And that's basically a cube. So sometimes somebody should figure out why they were doing this, maybe just for fun, I guess. But no one knows. Um, so that was dis those were discovered fairly recently. If you'd asked people maybe uh, 30 or 40 years ago who invented the dodecahedron, you'd, they would have said it was the ancient Greeks uh, because Plato wrote about, about it, uh, wrote about that shape. Um, and some people have theories that they were inspired to invent the shape, the dodecahedron, by looking at crystals of fool's gold, or iron pyrite, which look like a dodecahedron. You'll notice those look like pentagons, and it looks like three around each corner. But the interesting thing is that fool's gold, true to its name, is really just fooling you into thinking that it's a regular dodecahedron. Because no crystal can really be shaped like a regular dodecahedron. This is, fool's gold is actually a, a, crisp, uh, a cubic shaped crystal. It, the, the molecules form this cubicle pattern, and you can approximate a dodecahedron out of little cubes, as, sh as shown here. But it's not really right. If you look at these pentagons and you stare at them carefully, you see that they're not really a regular pentagon. But it's, so it's possible that the Greeks, because they liked everything to be mathematically beautiful and perfect, they, they looked at those iron pyrite crystals and imagined or came up with the idea of a perfect regular dodecahedron. That's a theory that, that some people have. No one's really sure about that, actually. Uh, the Greeks had colonies in Sicily. Uh, and there's a lot of iron pyrite there. And there are also a lot of Pythagoreans there. Pythagoras is a semi-legendary mathematician. It's believed that he, pretty much everyone believes he really existed and lived in the, around 500 BC. But people know very little about what he actually did. Um, there are huge amounts of myths and stories about what he did. But if you try to track down some 
track down those stories and find out if they're really true, they all sort of dissolve in your, in your hand. A lot of those stories you find were like stories that people made up several hundred years after he died. Um, but, there was, but it's known that there was a kind of cult, a vegetarian radical cult of mathematicians called Pythagoreans who actually gained quite a bit of political power in Sicily before they were all booted out and a bunch of them may have been killed in fact. Uh, and they were very, they had strange ideas. They thought that everything in nature was fundamentally mathematical. And there are stories that, that they w were very interested in the dodecahedron and that they had some kind of religious r or some kind of ritual where they would take the initiate, the, the, the budding Pythagorean, the young Pythagorean, and describe to them mathematically what a dodecahedron was like, not actually show them a dodecahedron, and then force them to imagine in their mind what a dodecahedron was like to test their powers of visualization. And then when they finally succeeded or whatever, then they would actually show them a dodecahedron. And then it would blow their minds. And then they would join the cult. <laughs> um, so as you can see, I'm sort of trying to round you up here to join the, the cult. Um, the Pythagoreans were also fascinated by uh, the five-pointed star, also called a pentagram, which the later Christians th thought was a demonic symbol. But the Pythagoreans um, seem to attribute magical properties to it. This is a, actually a picture made by some much later Pythagoreans of a pentagram. Uh, and the pentagram is a really interesting illustration of the some of the sneaky properties of the number five. So you may have looked at a pentagram a lot of times, but never, may never have really looked at it carefully. So here I have a regular pentagon, and then I just draw all these lines going between all the corners to get a five-pointed star. But if you look carefully, you see there are lots of triangles in there. And in fact, there are 20 triangles that all have the same proportions, all the same shape. Namely, there are five that look just like this red one and different rotated versions of that. There are five that look like this uh, blue one pointing this way, but there are also five that look like the blue one uh, that you can't see that would be pointing the other way. So that's a total of ten blue ones. And then there are five of these green ones. And they all have the same shape. And that's an interesting shape, actually. It's an interesting triangle. There's something special about that shape of triangle because of the following thing. So here what I've done is I've taken one of those triangles, this, this big triangle here, and I've chopped it into two smaller triangles, a green one and a blue one. And you'll see that this green one is the same shape as the whole big triangle. I could prove that geometrically, but I don't feel like doing that. That's a fun little exercise to prove that this little triangle has the, the exact same proportions as this big one. But if you believe that, then you, can, then you can see some interesting things. So let's make up some names for how long these different edges are. So let's call this edge here length 1. And let's call this longer edge here phi, which is a funny name for a number. It's also called the golden ratio, which we'll see why it's so great in a minute. Uh, so that length there is the same as this length here, because they're both just the longer edge of one of, these, of one of these kind of triangles that I'm outlining here. So that's phi, but that's also phi. So this whole long edge that I'm outlining now, that has length 1 plus phi. But that has the same length as the one on the outside here. So this is 1 plus phi. All these triangles are isosceles triangles, right? So the length of this is the same as the length of this. So 